Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's video is going to be a little bit different. Me and my wife, Amy, are going to be reviewing a cruise that we took on Disney Magic. To the Bahamas. To the Bahamas. So we moved into this house, what was it, almost two years ago? Almost two years. And I, I produce a video every day, so I didn't want to interrupt production uh, too much with the move. So I moved into this room, room number two in the house, uh, quickly. I used the carpet that was in here. I used everything the way it was. And I set up my equipment. I started recording, I think, like the next day after we moved. Probably. Something like that. I didn't even get to paint it. Uh, yeah, yeah, it was just, <laughs> just as it was. Uh, unfortunately, the carpet wasn't great. It had kind of an odor to it. Yeah. And I really wanted the brick wall. After I recorded for a while, I put up the black curtains, which are still in here. They're around the room and help with the sound absorption. But uh, I put up the black curtains. I used that for a long time. But I really still wanted to get back to that brick wall, but just circumstances kept getting in the way. We couldn't find it. It was hard to find, and I really wanted it to cover the, the entire wall. Right. That's what we did this time, whereas in the old set, it was really just part of the wall. Uh, it didn't give me many options for different shots and things, but it's tough because once you move in, you have all your equipment in here, the computer, the lights, microphones, mixers, cameras, teleprompter, all this stuff. It's really hard to say, okay, what's a good time to just pull everything out? Right, and move again. <laughs> right, rip, rip out the carpet. So what we decided to do was have the workers come in when we were on a cruise. Mm -hmm. So we moved everything out of the studio before the cruise. And then when we were gone, they came into the floor and the wall. And then we came home. I think it was the same day we came home from the cruise. Uh, we put up the lights, the yeah. camera. As soon as we got home, we computer. started working. Brought it all back in. Yeah. Yeah, it, was, uh, it wasn't fun. There's was a lot of wires. Yeah. There are a lot of wires. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a sea of wires. Uh, so I took photographs with my phone to make sure I got all the wires back in the right place, and I put blue tape on them and, and labeled them and everything else. So I got it working. Uh, but I thought, well, while we're taking this cruise, and we, we take cruises two, sometimes three times a year. We always say we're going to do four a year, but <laughs> that's never mm -hmm. been a reality. Never do. <laughs> but we try to take them. It's my only vacation. You know, I work seven days a week, 12 hours a day. I get a little bit ahead each week, just a little bit, enough to take very little vacation. So I really want it to be something special, so we take cruises, and that's what we did. Yeah, I was thinking about that the other day. Most people get two days a week off, which is 104 days a year. We take two or three cruises a year. That's like 12 or 13 days that you're taking off in an entire year. Yeah. So, so people might think, wow, you're lucky you get to go on three cruises a year. Yes, we are. Yeah, it's um, unfortunate. Yeah. We've, it's, I'm glad that we've found a vacation that we both enjoy equally. Um, but it really is very few days out of your entire year that you are that you have downtime. Yeah. yeah, it's not a lot. But like I said, we want to really enjoy it. Yep. So we take the cruises. And this time we went on Disney Magic, which I think was the first ship was the that first they ever ship. built. So in the world of cruising, I guess we should step back. In the world of cruising, there's Disney Cruise Line, there's like uh, Royal Caribbean, Carnival, uh, I think Viking. Norwegian. Uh, Norwegian. There's a, there's a lot of different. There's, there's one called MSC. Yeah. Something like that, right? Yeah, there is. Um, and, and there's probably many, many more that I know there are many more that right. um, just aren't as prominent. Yeah, that, that we don't see when we go right, to the Caribbean. Because right. you know, we see all the other ships, they right. sail along, you know, they sail together or, or near each other often. But So we've only ever been on Disney. Um, we've, heard a, we've heard stories about what it's like to be on um, Royal Caribbean and Carnival. And I'm sure they're very nice cruise lines, but we just decided to stick with Disney. Uh, I don't now. know what, what's that. For now. Yeah. That I don't know change. what the other ships are like, and there's there's talk of Norwegian moving to Philadelphia yeah. as their home port, so we'll yeah. try Norwegian when the time comes. But 
Um, you know, Carnival sails out of, of Baltimore, which would be really convenient. But um, I don't think that's the type of cruise line that we would enjoy. We're not drinkers. We're not gamblers. Disney has alcohol, if that's what you want. But there's no gambling on a Disney ship. No gambling, no. And that, to, for some people, that's a turn off. But I don't, we just don't do that. So, and we really enjoy, um, I think, the service. They, they, they just, they bend over backwards to take care of you. And, and the ships are in amazing condition. Mm-hmm. Um, they just... They just do it right. Yeah. And again, we haven't been on the other ones. So right. They might be nice. I don't know. But it's just not, you know, I, I, from what we hear, I think Disney's the best fit. And, and the Disney cruises are a little are a little pricier, but not, not dramatically. No, not, not when you, when everything is included. You, you look at the, the list price and that plus your taxes and port fees, that's your full price. Mm-hmm. Whereas in my experience with booking, because we have booked other cruises that we didn't take, my experience with booking them is that their advertised price is a per person price, not a couple price. And Disney's price is advertised per cabin of two people. Right. So by the time you add in drink packages, even for sodas and things where on Disney that's all included. Um, it just... Yeah, it works out. It, it works out to where I think Disney's a good value. But plus I get my my character fix. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah, so, so some people might ask, like, are we fans of, like, the Disney Corporation, like the whole Disney experience? I'm not really. I like their big budget movies, like the Star Wars and Marvel and all that. Theme parks, uh, they're okay. I love it. (laughs) Yeah, they're okay. And I really like the cruise ships, whereas I know you feel differently. Well, I actually, as we're getting older, I do enjoy the cruises more because it's a lot less walking. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, But even on the ship, we did over 10,000 steps. So it's not a lot less walking, but um, it is what you make it. And I feel like the parks are there that's my first love it's always going to be where i want to go but there's two different kinds of vacations a cruise is a real vacation where you can you can literally do as much or little as you want if you just want to sit by the pool the entire day you can do that if you want to do all the activities you can do that too which is what we tend to do run all over the place and do everything but but in the parks, it's go, go, go all day, and it it's really an exhausting Yeah, in the South trip. Florida sun. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it, it can be challenging. But, you know, the parks are okay, but but I'm not a huge, like, I'm not really into Disney, like, specifically. Right. Like, I don't need the characters and all that, but we take we take a lot of pictures with them, and they're That's fine. Like, I they're, love they're, that. Not, they're not awful. <laughs> That's just, my favorite part. Just I don't, I wouldn't need that part necessarily. Right. So, uh, by way of background... This was our sixth cruise. Yes. Never been on Magic. We've been on Dream, Fantasy, and Wish. Uh, Dream and Fantasy are sister ships and Wishes and newer uh, design. So, you know, I read about Magic before we took the cruise. Magic's a smaller boat uh, by a margin. Yeah. Fewer decks, but also uh, quite a bit shorter. Yes. Uh, and and the beam is, is smaller. So, like, like, when you walk in... Like you walk in, I think it's on the starboard side, right? Walk in. Right. And and you in dream, like when you look across to port side, like there's a lot of distance there. Like you, the ship is wide, the beam. And in magic, I felt like I was ready to fall off the other end, like fall out of the port <laughs> side, like just walk in, like, wow, this ship is so small. But I think if you had sailed on magic first, then then dream and fancy would seem bloated right. and wish yeah, like all exactly. these bloated ships are too big. You yeah. know? So it's all a matter of opinion. I thought that for the space, I mean, it's clear to me when you look at magic and then say dream and wish that there was an evolution where Disney learned things right. about 
what did and didn't work. Right. Well, and I'm sure that with their first ship, they didn't know what to expect. So they didn't want to start with a mega ship and then not be able to fill it. So, yep. and then as they grew, they, their ships are getting bigger. Yep. So let's let's go through the cruise, right? Mm -hmm. So we uh, we cleaned out this studio and left the key for the workmen, right? And then we we took off, or we're getting ready to take off, getting ready to uh, to leave. So it was like a Saturday, and we're supposed to leave on Sunday. And then we ran into a small mm -hmm. issue with the uh, with the flight, a kind of an unexpected issue. I won't go into all the details, but we ended up uh, having to take a very early morning flight. Right. Um, and we see, like, we took a picture here in the uh, in the airport. We have the luggage. Yeah, looking like a ball of fire <laughs> at zero dark thirty. <laughs> yeah, we we didn't have a lot of energy uh, for this particular flight, and, and there weren't many people in the flight. Like I think there's there's a reason why there were seats still yeah, available. Yeah, it, it was much quieter in the airport too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was it was felt really abandoned. Yeah, like when we when we arrived, it was still pretty well dark outside. Yeah, and uh, there there wasn't much going on. But as we were, Waited for the flight. More people, more people came in. Right. And and uh, so Philadelphia Airport. That's where we went. Uh, flight was, of course, to uh, Fort Lauderdale. Uh, port Everglades is the the port where Magic sailed from. So, um, so here we are in the plane. Uh, the obligatory. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the obligatory beginning of the trip. Um, and then we went to. Uh, it was the Hilton Garden Inn, right? So we, we did an airport and the hotel. Uh, this was our first show. time leaving from Fort Lauderdale as well. So new ship, new port for us. Um, so it was a lot of a lot of firsts. I mean, it was familiar, but it was still a lot of firsts with yeah. some different things. So yeah. it was kind of good. Yeah, Port Canaveral, uh, and then we took one out of Manhattan. Manhattan right. Cruise Terminal, which was actually perfect for us. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, people might say, well, Manhattan, you know, it's going to be dirty and, you know, whatever, because it's such a crowded and, and uh, uh, just super compressed city where sometimes social norms get violated. You know, like it's not yeah. always the friendliest, but we actually thought Manhattan was, was great. Yeah, it was two great. and a half hours and you're there. Yeah, we drove to it, we parked, like we left the same morning, it was great, but Port Canaveral is tough because you have to fly to Orlando, and then you have to right. make your way over to the port, which is like an hour and fifteen or an hour and twenty minutes. It's a yeah. Uh, but but we're familiar with Fort Lauderdale. It's Broward County. We used to live in Pembroke Pines years yep. ago, for, briefly, and uh, familiar with the area, familiar with the airport. So went to the Hilton Garden Inn. It was a nice place. It was okay. So uh, good view outside um, of Fort Lauderdale. Mm -hmm. uh, no problems there. Um, it was within walking distance, like an outback steakhouse and some, some type of chicken place. So the next day, uh, the day the ship left, we took an Uber to the CVS. Yeah. Cause I forgot some things. Yeah. So took an Uber to CVS and then directly to the port. And, uh, and it still only, t <laughs> it still only took like 20 minutes even with the stop at CVS. Yeah. It was, so it was, it was a lot more convenient going out of Fort Lauderdale. Yeah, and you look at the cost, I think it was, uh, before the tip, I think it was around $26. Yeah, for two stops. Yeah, and, and I think the shuttle was was 20 a person. Or... Yeah, so we could see the ship, of course, the, at Port Everglades, uh, pulled up, we dropped off, went to the terminal. This is the first time we've been in this cruise terminal. Yeah. Very spacious, but we did wait a while before boarding, I noticed. We did, but we... Yeah, we because we arrived, we got there a little bit before our port arrival time. They didn't start boarding. It took them a long time. Right away, because we were supposed to board between 11.30 and 11.45, and we didn't, we weren't called until like 12.15 mm -hmm. to, for our group. So I don't know, I don't know if it took them longer to clear the ship from the ending cruise. Mm -hmm. Or uh, what? I don't know. I don't know what happened, but but we were a little late. Get yeah. being called to go on. 
So when you first go on the ship, uh, you can't go directly to your room unless you're running late. Right. Uh, the rooms usually uh, are available to get in at like 2. They usually tell us 2 o'clock. On this one, they told us one thirty. Yeah. I am not sure what the time difference, although they were moving everything up trying to get us going. So right. I don't, I'm not sure, again, why the difference. Maybe smaller ship, quicker to clean. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, but it was one thirty, which was nice. Um, but you know, you're kind of sitting there with with uh, the bags that you're carrying, right? Still, so you know, you're kind of like pulling these bags around. Although you can check the big yeah, ones. Yeah, your your checked bags mm. you drop off at the porter, but they they always tell you carry on stuff, medications, passports, all your all your important things need to be carried with you. Right. You don't want to. You don't want to check those because you don't know when you'll get them. Yeah. You're not guaranteed to get luggage until dinner time, and ours never has been that late. Yeah, yeah, but, not before that. But they don't. They can't guarantee that it will be. So. Yeah. Um, so that that was it worked out. But we were carrying the carry on bags, and then we ran into uh, Minnie Mouse, I believe. Right. <laughs> we had a Minnie Mouse. Yeah. Um, we didn't really run into her, but no? we ran up to her. <laughs> we ran up to her. Okay. Uh, and then, so this particular uh, ship, uh, well, all the ships have, have have three main dining areas. Yeah, they have three main dining rooms, uh, and and there's always one all open for lunch on embarkation day. And we have always gone to, not always, we usually go to Cabanas, which is the buffet, and it's loud and it's hectic and it's crowded and so the last this one and the one before this the one we did out of manhattan um we went and sat down in the mm -hmm. in the restaurant and it's just such a more peaceful yeah. experience yeah it was better doing it's it this way. quiet they bring the food to you you don't have to keep running up to the buffet uh yeah it, I definitely enjoy that a lot more. It's just so much quieter. Yeah. So this one was uh, Rapunzel's royal table. Table. Mm -hmm. table. Um, and it had like a purple theme, my favorite color. So it was a, yeah. it was a pretty restaurant. Yeah. Uh, it definitely seemed kind of, it is not like a dig at it, but just simplistic yeah. compared to like Enchanted Garden or like on Dream or, you know, some of the other. Right. Um, restaurants we've seen. But it was certainly nice. Uh, and so we ate uh, lunch, waiting for our room to be open. So then we got into the room. So throughout some of these pictures and videos, you probably see these uh, yellow tags that we have around our necks. Uh, lanyards. Are yellow lanyards. lanyards. <laughs> They're lanyards. They hold the, uh, the key to bankruptcy, is that what it's called? The key, the key to the world key card. To the world card. Okay. <laughs> yeah, um, this, this is the card you use to uh, for everything. Yeah, to get in your room and, and all kinds of other stuff. So, if you go on, I think it's your first cruise. You don't get a lanyard. Right. You you don't get any gift when you go on your first cruise. And then two to five. Well, well, starting at two, you get right. a silver. Right. Right. And then. This was our sixth. We completed five, so we had yellow. So it goes silver, yellow, and then <laughs> it goes to uh, it goes to platinum at ten. So like eleventh cruise when you're on your eleventh right. cruise, right. and then I think twenty five is pearl, yes. which is just like twenty. I can't imagine twenty five. Okay, it's hard to imagine ten, but um, so I guess someday we'll get to platinum. Easy peasy, we'll get there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you know, it's just like it's just like the Olympics. But you have the silver medal, the yellow medals. Yeah. Um, I, don't, I don't know why it's yellow and gold would have made more sense, but they just they went with yellow. That's what I see. That's what I see when I look at is yellow. It is very yellow. Yeah. No, but it's supposed to be gold. And, and I was actually surprised how many people. There were a lot of gold yeah. this time. There were a lot I don't gold. feel like there usually are, but there, I do feel like there were a lot this time. Yeah. We saw a few platinum. Uh, Tons of silver. Yeah. So there's a lot of yeah. repeat cruisers. Uh, but here's the room. Uh, we get we get a, a veranda room, typically. 
Uh, that's what this one is. So it has like a balcony around it. Right. And we also get it a little extended. It has a little bit more space. I think it's like 50 square feet bigger than the regular veranda room. Yeah, it's not it's not a whole lot different, but and it, it's we nice. we fill it up. <laughs> yeah, it, it, that, that little bit of square footage makes a difference. Um, but, uh, of course, it comes at a little bit of a premium. The, the, yeah, uh, this yeah, it's room. a little more expensive. Uh, like the inside rooms. So they have inside rooms, so there's no window or anything. Right. And they have portal but rooms. But they have magic portals in them. Magic portals. The magic portal. And then they have actual portal rooms. Yeah. Where there's just, just, just a porthole, and you can see... Uh, you know, right above the ocean or whatever, but you can't open it. No. Right? That would be bad. Yeah. Be no. bad. I don't think the portal room would be awful. No. But, but we use the veranda a lot. We do use it a lot. More than anybody on the ship, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, yeah. I never, yeah. I, I think I saw the people beside us one time out on theirs. We're out on ours all the time. Yeah. Yeah, we probably spend too much time out there, but it, so it makes it worth it though to get it. Yeah, yeah. we enjoy it. Yeah. Uh, so, so here we are uh, with the the yellow slash gold. But so you have magnets on the door. Yeah, you want to talk about that a little bit? So, in learning about cruising on it for our first cruise, I found that door magnets are a big thing because everything in the ship, the walls, the doors, they're all metal. So. Um, a lot of people say they're magnetic. They're not magnetic. They're metal. They're metal so you yeah. could put magnets on them, and they will stick. But they're not magnet. They're not magnetic. Um, yeah, you, you won't go stick right. to the door. They're wearing metal. Yeah. But um, so I started. Well, I ordered, I ordered magnets for our first cruise, and then I found a Facebook group of graphics that have a bunch of artists as their administrators and they all create these graphics and you can use them for your own. You can't sell anything with it, but you can use them to make your own personal magnet. So I've, I've read many different ways of making magnets. Um, some people print it on cardstock and then laminate it and put a magnet on the back. Some people print it on sticker paper and put that on a magnet and they're good to go. Some of the older ships have been, the doors have been painted so many times that you need a stronger magnet to stick because it won't, it won't stick as much because there's so many layers of paint. So I've used pretty much every one of these methods. I've printed on vinyl sticker sheets and put those on magnetic sheets and had my Cricut cut it out. I've printed on regular printer paper and laminated it with shelf paper of all things from the dollar store um, for things that I know I'm only going to use one time. If it's something I want to keep and use multiple times, I'll do it a little nicer. I'll laminate it with like a 3M self-laminating sheet and put a heavy-duty magnet on the back. Um, so I've done, I have a little bit of everything and I always do a magnet exchange. So I don't know if they'll be able to see, but the fish hanging beside our door, every door has a fish or a starfish or some kind of metal thing beside their door. And, and on Disney cruises, you do gift exchanges, which are called fish extenders because you hang pockets from those fish thereby extending your fish, fish extender, and you exchange gifts with like five or six cabins. And I didn't really want to do that for our first cruise because I didn't really know what to expect. And so I wanted to try to keep it simple. And so I joined a magnet exchange. So it's the same idea. You just exchange magnets with several other cabins. And in, in that case, it ended up being, for our very first cruise, it ended up being, I think, 16 cabins we exchanged magnets with. It was, it was a lot. Yeah, yeah. It was you had a to lot. go to each cabin. It might have been 22. It, it might have been 22. It was a lot. We, we ended up with a lot of steps on that one. Yeah, because we took the kids on that cruise, and I I signed up for the magnet exchange for the, all the girls, too, because they wanted to do it as well. So 
I think it was 22. So I bought 22 magnets times four because we each did it. So we would go to a door and leave four different magnets on each door. Yeah. But then we came home with a door full of magnets. So I have done this for every cruise. And the only metal door, aside from our refrigerator, in our home is our garage door. The and interior, it is yeah. covered. Yeah. It is covered. And now I've moved to the outside of the yeah. <laughs> interior garage door. So our garage door is covered with magnets that I have made or gotten in in a magnet exchange. So for this one, I have it was a Halloween cruise. It was their Halloween on the high seas. So I have the pumpkins with our names. Um, the banners at the top are each of the ships we've been on with the dates of the cruises that we were on those ships. Um, that's, those are, I just printed those on regular paper and laminate them with cheap, like contact paper because I will update those as we go. But I thought that was just kind of a cute way to track which cruises we've been on. Um, and the same with like, the bats and the ghosts and all that. I just, I printed those, I printed those one time for last year's Halloween cruise, thinking we would probably not go on too many Halloween cruises. And then we ended up going on a second Halloween cruise. <laughs> so I just packed them all and, and off we went. So I did an exchange this time and there were, I had two groups. I actually ran the exchange this time. Mm -hmm. We had two groups and I think there were eight and nine people in each group. And so, and I put myself in each group because I wanted, because I like, I like yeah. to do a lot of magnets. Yeah. And so we ran around the ship and delivered all our magnets. And I got, everybody in our group did a really good job this time. I, I'm pretty impressed with, with what we came home with. So you mentioned kids earlier and everybody might not know they're adults. Yeah, our kids are not kids. Yeah. I, they're my kids. They'll always be kids. But they are they are, can I say what they are? No, you can say. <laughs> they, they have a phrase of, yeah, but I, yeah. They, I are, they are grown men, <laughs> so they keep telling me. Um, so, yeah, when I say kids, they're, grown they're, blank they're not men. kids. They're, they're grown, grown men. Grown yeah. blank men, but yeah, okay. Um, and, and they're girlfriends. One is now wife, but at the time was a girlfriend, so. Yeah, so we took all of all six of the the kids, and the two of us. So there were eight of us on the first cruise. Yeah, yeah. So that was a really great cruise. That was during it was that was during COVID, the end, the tail end of COVID. Yeah, I guess. when cruising had just reopened. Yeah, so there was a lot of uh, there was rules that were changed temporarily, and there was fewer people, much fewer people. Much fewer people. It was the best cruise yeah, ever. Yeah, it really was the best. Like, <laughs> if I had known, I think we. Probably would have done like back to back. I think the ship was at half capacity. Yeah. So, uh, in so again, this is the fourth time. This is our first time in Port Lauderdale, and I took some some video. It looks like outside. Mm -hmm. It's a it's a port that has uh, like oil tankers, cargo ships, and of course cruise ships. This is I think, <laughs> is this before or after the muster drill? I think it's before. Mm -hmm. Because I want to talk about the muster drill. I think I don't remember. Yeah, I'm going to. I would have to look at my time stamp. It might yeah. be after. Uh, so, and I realize this is required. But I'm going to complain a little bit. Uh, yeah. I'm sure every ship has this, but the Disney ships have a muster drill. It's probably mandated by the Bahamas or it whoever is. you know, whoever the ship. I think the ship is is registered in the Bahamas. Yes. Uh, where, where many, I think most cruise ships are, and uh, the the muster drill, like on the first cruise we went on. It was kind of quasi suspended, like you still had it, right? But you, you really, all you had to do is go. So the muster drill is like what what you do in an emergency, right? So you had to go to this to this location of the ship. I think you had to maybe scan something with your phone or take a. I, don't I think what you it just is. had to, yeah. With our with our key cards, you had just had to scan in and yeah. and say that you yeah. showed up. So basically, you were telling the, the employee, which they call staff, uh, cast, cast members. members. Uh, like I'm here, like I recognize like zone P or zone I or whatever, right. or whatever it is. 
uh, or ra- assembly point. Assembly, assembly, <laughs> assembly station. Assembly station, right. So I was like, this is great. Right? Because I've never been on a cruise before. Right. Like, this is terrific. Like, I, you know, no problem. Uh, yeah, if there's an emergency, I'll come down to this <coughs> assembly station and follow the instructions. And then um, we learned that that was a special thing. Right. And when COVID uh, morphed into whatever situation is considered now, not not as not a pandemic or whatever, they started doing the traditional ones, which are just awful. <laughs> They're just awful. You have to. Well, depending on your room is, you might be inside, but you have to meet at right. the assembly station, which may be inside, but but in our experience, it's almost always outside, in the heat. And Out of six cruises, yeah, we've had two, two inside, inside, and the and the one that we didn't really have to do, we just had to check in. So, three of them, yeah, have been outside, in the heat. And my favorite part is, they tell you, okay, shoulder to shoulder. And everybody's standing shoulder to shoulder in the heat. And then they say, move over, move yeah. over, move over. And you're like standing like this next to people you don't know, sweating. Yeah. Yeah. Waiting for them to, to make sure that everybody who's supposed to be there showed up. Right. Because you have to show up and they will not start it until the entire ship checks in at their points. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, there's always going to be first time cruisers. And I assume, they don't have to do it. I assume they're the violators, the first-time cruisers. Don't, don't show up. They're like, oh, yeah, mandatory. Mandatory doesn't include me. Right. right? I'm not going to do that. <laughs> and we're sitting there like, come on. Like, just show up so we can go. And, you know, they track them down. They track them down. They do track them down. And, they, they, you know, they have to show up. So the idea is there's, there's a general alarm, I think it's called. Right. It's very loud. They play it. It's like seven tones. Yeah. And the last tone's long or something. And when that happens, you know, in theory, all the... Cast members put on the little uh, life jackets, life jackets, and the and the these uh, like reflective mm-hmm. gizmos, and in a calm and orderly fashion, yeah. they go to the location, and and you go back to your room and get your medication and and comfy and shoes clothes, or whatever it is, yeah, warm clothes and comfy. Who brings warm clothes on a hot cruise? Yeah. <laughs> and and then you know very calmly again as the ship right. is sinking, right. you're just going to calmly go down. Nothing's going to go wrong, right? Uh, and then you'll you'll just gingerly uh, <laughs> go on to the the life raft, and everybody will be As if smiling. Nothing's wrong. Yeah, they'll yeah. be serving ice cream on it. Right. Know. You know, I'm sure. No, there's no ice cream out of it. I'm sure <laughs> that uh, there's people who believe that's how it would work, but I can tell you, um, having studied human nature a little bit. That <laughs> I think it would be complete pandemonium, right? Like, Absolutely. You have like, you have you have like Minnie Mouse like running down the the deck floor, knocking people out. I'm gonna get on that boat. You know, head flies off. You know, Goofy comes <laughs> up and tackles Minnie's her. Minnie's head will be floating in the water. <laughs> Not today, Minnie. <laughs> it's Goofy's turn to live. Like that's what it would be like. <laughs> I think all all the the guests would just be like mortified. Like, what's going on? Like, you know. Yeah, I, I don't think it would be orderly, but I guess they want to give it a chance. Yeah. You know, so they give it they want to give it a chance, so they say, um, please follow the rules, please come down and, and, and wait in the heat. Uh, but I do think that the mustard drill, I'm sure it's important, it's necessary. But but you know it's too long when you start thinking like, okay, can I can I just take my chances with the drowning? <laughs> like, it's still good. Like, like I'm not that worried about it. It's a horrible way to think. But that's how long it is. Right. You start, you start right. thinking those thoughts like, uh, you know, I can figure this out. Right. But, you know. but once it's over, uh, my other complaint is once it's over, you can't move. You can't because the entire ship is out of their rooms and they've got elevators blocked, the hallways are blocked, mm-hmm. the stairways are blocked, everything's blocked. And it's just it's just a huge traffic jam. Yeah. And you can't you can't move. You have to stand there. I will say. Out of all of them that we've done, except for the first one where we didn't really have to do it, mm-hmm. this was the quickest. Yeah, this one. Was I do there. feel like it was the quickest. Um, they wanted to get us, our, they wanted to bump up our sail away time, so they had to bump up our mustard drill time because the island we were going to was a little further away this time. So I looked at my watch when we stepped out on the deck. And it was exactly 15 minutes and we were done. Mm-hmm. And I feel like 
I feel like the last couple have been 20, 25, and even 30 minutes. Yeah. yeah. Mostly because people aren't showing up. Yeah, it's ridiculous. And I, so I was pleased that it was short, but I also feel like we should get a frequent flyer card. We've, we've done this so many times yeah. and we've done them in pretty quick succession because not everybody cruises as much as we do. Some people cruise a lot more, mm -hmm. but because we just went on a ship a couple of months ago, we're familiar with all of this. We didn't forget it. I need a frequent flyer card so I can say, I don't need to attend yeah. muster drill. Now, if it's a different ship, if you haven't been in a year, okay, I can see making you go. But if you're going on a ship that you've been on within the last six months to a year, and you've already been through muster drill, I think you should get a pass. Yeah, we we should we should lobby for some type of change in the law. Um, I'll never do it. No, no. <laughs> it it would actually, I think a lot of people would be thrilled not to have to go to it. I'm sure. And and I, I doubt it's going to increase the number of people who die in cruise ship sinkings because that doesn't happen very often. Right. Um, although there have been cruise ship disasters, uh, I was uh, well, Concordia, the ship Concordia. Like that's not Disney, but right. there have been disasters where. Terrible things have happened. So anyway, muster drill over. We have to wait for the elevator or take the stairs. And you really have to be in good condition to go all the way from like deck four to deck. Uh, well, we were on deck eight. That's not too bad. Right. But in other ships, uh, I've walked four to 11 before, three to 11, two to 11. And it's, I'm pretty tired yeah, by the time I get Yeah, it's a lot. There. That's a lot of steps. Yeah. I can do it, you know, and then. It might take me like a half hour. And I, could do I it can again. go down those many steps. I cannot go up that many steps. Yeah, yeah. I can go up some. I can't go. I, I can't go up. I guess worst case, you could do like two decks and rest. You know, whatever. Like if if the st if you couldn't use the elevators, you know, if they're they're jammed right. up. But but there's no way to get around the elevators. So then we went and uh, we found ice cream. We always find <laughs> ice cream when you're on the ship. Yeah. That's, Unlimited free ice cream. That's your favorite part of the cruise is <laughs> the ice cream. We have breakfast, and then we have ice cream, and then we have lunch, and we have ice cream, and we have dinner, and we have ice cream. And then we have to go get ice cream before the ice cream machine shuts down for the night and have ice cream again. Yeah, at 11 <laughs> not, p.m. Not, it's not really that much, but you did have ice cream three times a day. It has been quite a bit, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I like to, so I like to, I also eat ice cream at dinner. Right. Uh, and I think... Maybe I've had a few times at lunch, too. I didn't see ice cream in Cabanas this time, but we've been there before where there was ice cream. Yeah, when we were on, what were we on Wish. last? Wish was last. There was ice cream, mm -hmm. like hard scoop ice cream. Yeah, and so yeah, after dinner, after like whatever, three scoops of vanilla, which is what I usually ask for right. at dinner, and we're second dining, so it's late. Right. And by the time you're done talking to the people at your table and stuff, uh, yeah, it's usually about 10. Yeah, I feel like by we're, the time we we're get racing, there, it's 10 o'clock. We're racing to get to the ice cream uh, before it closes. But uh, yeah, that's on, uh, I think it was on 9 on Magic, but it's normally on 11, like on the other shows right. at 11. And I made that ice cream cone. You didn't talk about how good my cone was. Mm -hmm. It's a very good cone. <laughs> and, I, and I'll tell you, there's a lot of disaster cones. If you look around, people do not know how to do it. People you do not know how to do that. Um, I My very first job was at Dairy Queen. And that there's a specific way to make a cone and that I've never lost that. It was like riding a bike for me. I can just make the cone stand up straight like that, have a nice little curl at the top. And you went to make a cone and you came back and you're like, my cone was really messy. It was, it was horrible. <laughs> it was barely you staying in the to, actual you, cone. You, people, when it's, especially when it's not smooth like that, because Dairy Queen's ice cream is smooth. It doesn't have the ridges in it like this does. And and people kind of let it control right. where it goes. And you have to control it. So you have to you have to force it to stay in that in that upright position so that it doesn't so it doesn't fall all over you. Yeah. My, my cone looked like the, the machine attacked me. Uh, it, was, it was bad. So, but that one's great. The one that you make's great. So we did that, and then uh, we, I guess we we were dressed. 
We changed for dinner changed because for we always change before the show. Right. Because the, the show, show right. the show, so there's two dinner times and there's two shows. So if you have first dinner, you go to dinner and then you go to your show. If you have second dinner, you go to your show and then you go to dinner. And in between all of that, there's background pictures and characters and different things to do. And we always change before we go to the show so that we don't have to rush back to the room and hurry up and change our clothes and then run out the door. So we kind of try to do it early and get a little bit settled and then go and watch our show because we always do second dining because yeah, we don't eat dinner at 530 at night. We just that's just too early. Yeah, well, there's that, and as you've mentioned, there's a lot of children at the first yeah. dining, and it's jammed. Yeah. Whereas the second dining, uh, it's mostly adults. Right. Um, and I and I feel like they don't really, they don't really push you out. Right. It's yeah. I feel yeah. like it is a little more relaxed in the sense they don't have another group coming in afterwards. They're only resetting for the next day, mm -hmm. and so. You can sit and talk to your table mates and, and not be quite as rushed. Where first dining, you got to get out because the next group has to come in. So, yeah. So, so here we are at the show. Um, this was, uh, was a tangled? Tangled. Yeah. So, we've seen um, this is, of course, before the show starts when people are coming in. But uh, we've seen uh, Beauty and the Beast mm -hmm. on other ships, I think, on. Dream. One or two. Was it just one? Dream? And then we've seen Aladdin on two different ships. We've seen Aladdin on two different ships. Um, Aladdin is Aladdin's amazing. Excellent. Yeah. It's amazing. Uh, and Beauty and the Beast is pretty good. That was that was on Dream when we were on it. Right. Um, the the ta Tangled was, was okay. Yeah, it was good. Yeah. It was good. They they don't Disney doesn't do anything halfway. They they really don't. Um so if they if they are going to invest in it. They're going to do it right. Yeah. So, it was good. It didn't. It didn't knock my socks off. Aladdin. Aladdin gave me goosebumps. It was just incredible. Um, although I will say that the lantern scene at the end mm -hmm. got me. That that yeah. was really well done. Yeah. And and I just my jaw was on the floor. I was like, wow. That like that's. They really did it right. Yeah, they're great. They're great productions. Uh, the uh, you know sometimes people come late and they walk in front of That's you. That's just and... it. I feel like there needs to be some etiquette. And if you're late for a show, that's fine. I'm not always on time. But have some courtesy and just quietly yeah. find a seat. Don't talk and turn your cell phone on and do all this other stuff. Just, I mean, you've got live actors doing their thing and and they, a lot of times on these ships, are in the aisle. Yeah, and they're plowing. They are plowing Yeah, those guys those were aisles. really running in that yeah. They in shake that one the show. floor. Like you can, like, yeah. It's, so, yeah. So really, be on time or plan on sitting in the back and just come in quietly and sit down. It's it's just courtesy. I don't believe I can't believe how many times some people will get up and come back and get up and come back. The show's not that long, I, right? It's an hour, and you're up and down like fifteen times. What are you doing? What is right. so important? Why, why did you even take the cruise if you're so important? You can't sit yeah, still. It's a one hour show. Yeah. Um, I get it if you have a little kid that's crying or squirming or whatever you got to take them. But these were adults yes. with no kids. Yes. Just up and down, up and down. What are you doing? They do claim to be adults. Um, <laughs> so we did. So we did tangle, and then we went to. Uh, then we went to dinner. Mm -hmm. uh, we did pack pictures. We oh, took, we did pictures. We yeah. took our pictures after. Yeah. Um, with the lantern. Yeah. So what? What? Uh, what restaurant were we in? We were at Rapunzel's. Oh, the same place. The for, first okay, night. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that was the first night, and then we met. Uh, we won't use any names, but we met some other people. Right, we so, had two couples as our table mates. We we typically request a private table. Um, 
obviously on our first cruise with all the kids, we it was eight of us, so yeah. we filled up a table. And we went with friends on the Manhattan. Right, we went with friends on Manhattan, and and we've requested a private table for every other cruise, and two of those times, so so two times we had family or friends. Two times we were alone, mm-hmm. and two times we've had table mates. Yeah, and it has always impressed me with how well we got along with most of our most of, most of our table mates. <laughs> not, not <all. laughs> uh, the first time we had table mates, we weren't expecting it. Yeah, and and, I, I and think, we walked I think I had a look in. Look on my face when yeah, I was like, we walked in and and realized we were sitting with two other couples and we and they left the middle seat yeah, empty the middle, that's and we kind of looked at each other like uh yeah okay just, because we had it. had so many private tables we we really were it really was a shock um yeah and so we sat in the middle of this these other two couples and immediately started talking yeah. and and again this is an earlier cruise right yeah. and we we had so much in common and I, I just was blown away by that, that, like, here's these two other couples that we had no idea who they were, mm-hmm. and and so many similarities. And I'm like, okay, how did Disney do that? It's just a fluke, right? Yeah, maybe. But then this time, right, it happened again. Same thing, right? <laughs> yeah, one of the we, couples was platinum, and right. one was gold at the same, or oh, right. yellow. They, was like yeah, gold. they were on their sixth yeah. cruise as well. Yeah. And... Again, so many things in common, and it was great. Like mm-hmm. we, so we feel like we've gained some friends through all of this. That we've we've tried to reconnect with the first couple to go on cruises, but they they're travelers and they're doing their thing. But but I I think eventually we might actually get on a cruise with these same folks again mm-hmm. because we've all kept in touch and and uh, really got along yeah. really well, yeah. which was really. It was kind of cool. Mm-hmm. It, I enjoyed that part of it very I, much. I remember on uh, was it, I forget the ship, but the one where we in the middle, in the middle. Uh, that was fantasy. That was, that fantasy. was our five night. And uh, one of, one of the couples didn't come back, right? Right, right. <laughs> and uh, you know, the way I look at it is fair enough, right. right? Like you know, you don't, you know, maybe they were like, we don't want to hang out with these people. Uh, yeah, we don't. I don't even know their names. Yeah, I don't either. I mean, it's. Didn't hurt our feelings. It's it's just how it works, you know. But I just thought it was funny because one we got one couple we got along with really really well. Yeah. And exchanged like. Right, Facebook and we all talked. And, like they seemed fine. Mm-hmm. Like, everybody talked, and the second night they didn't show up, and then the third. I think it was the third night. The first couple had other reservations, so we knew they weren't coming. But then this other couple didn't come either, so we had a six top table yeah. to ourselves, and we were like, it's just us yeah. and and we ran into them we ran into that couple on on right, the, the pool ship. deck yeah. later on and they were like oh we'll see you at dinner tomorrow night because it was our last <laughs> night sure. and they never showed up and we're like okay yeah I, so i don't i don't know yeah. i don't know what that was but but okay. we had a really good time with the couple that did show up and took pictures together and exchanged phone numbers and all that and yeah. And, and on this current cruise, they all showed up. Right. right. And yeah. on yeah, on this cruise, um, everybody showed up every night except for the one night. One couple had, but they had reservations. And and they the, told us that right in advance that they wouldn't be there. So because there's a there's a paid restaurant. Right. There's a um, an adult restaurant. Um, it's adult only right. restaurant is what I guess I should say. Um, yeah, and you have to get dressed up fancy and all that kind of stuff to go there. So they went for that. So they. But they told us in advance they wouldn't be at dinner. But then they came the rest of the time, right. and we took pictures again with our servers, and just had a really good time with them. Yeah. We really enjoyed that. So, uh, so one of my favorite places on any of these ships is deck four. Yeah, right. That's the deck where they would load the lifeboats in the unlikely event of emergency. Right. Very orderly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, very orderly. And on. So on Magic and, and Wonder is the sister ship to Magic, which we've, we've never been on. Right. And Not in yet. Dream and Fantasy, uh, Deck 4 wrap all the way around the ship. Right. So there's 
uh, except in certain times when they're cleaning things and some other times when you can't get around. You know, for the rest of the time, you can get around. Right. Uh, except for those times, you can get around the whole the whole deck. So it's actually like there's a sign up for like walking, right? Running, walking you know. track, and they want you to go a certain way. Yeah. So you walk around the deck, and like so many times around is a mile or whatever uh, it is. Yeah. It's different for uh, between magic and, and dream, but on wish. And I, and I believe on Treasure, which is right. coming out, which is another ship that's, I think, the same class as Wish. And then Destiny, which is the same class. They have, for some reason, they've made it so, like, functionally, you can move up and down one side, port or starboard, right. but you can't go around. Right. And it doesn't make any sense. No, it doesn't, because there are a lot of people that go in the early morning and run mm -hmm. or like yourself would go and walk although we didn't really do that much this we, didn't, time. we didn't walk the deck we, too much we walked a lot on the ship so much so that we neither one needed to go mm -hmm. and walk steps, yeah. we, we were doing ten thousand steps in a day on that little ship mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> so yeah. we were we were all over the place yeah one thing that's definitely different about you know because magic's smaller Right. Is when you do get into, like near the, the bow or the stern. Right. It gets really narrow. The passage is yeah, really you, they narrow. Yeah, they have they have um, mirrors up in the corners so that you can see mm -hmm. people coming the other way. Um, and yeah, we had to we had to do single file through there because it was yeah tight in, quarters. In Dream, you, you can like you can pass people. Right. It's not a problem. Like there's tons of room. Doesn't seem like there's tons of room, but then you see magic, you realize it's so pretty. It's actually yes, it's a beautiful <laughs> ship, just just much smaller. Uh, another thing that's different about magic that uh, I knew about this because I I'd seen right. other material on it, but it surprised me was in the at the bow of the ship. Uh, there's a there's an area where you can you can actually kind of see behind the scenes, sort of, right. and you can see mooring lines that are used. When, when the ship is docked, and on the other ships, so like Dream, Wish, whatever, you cannot. Right, all that's behind a wall. They hide it. Yeah. Because, I think they just they hide it because it's not part of the magic. It's it's behind the scenes. And yeah. Disney's very, um, very determined that they're not going to spoil the magic, and I feel like. They think that this does, but for you, yeah, uh, yeah, it was it was part of your magic because y you love all that stuff, and and it was even for me, it was really cool to see all that because you don't normally see it, and yeah, anything to do with machinery, yeah, uh, I really like. Well, and, and I think I think ships in general, like mm -hmm. I, I don't know why it never occurred to me for thirty years when you said you would never go on a cruise. How fascinated by it you would be if I could just convince you that you enjoy this part of it, and the rest of it would just come along. I could have been cruising for thirty years and didn't know it. <laughs> <laughs> well, so yeah, I think you know the behind the scenes of magic. That's it's a it's a great uh, uh, feature yeah. that they have. Uh, now, one thing we did uh, later when the ship was docked. We tried to go back. We walked forward, right? You know, and, and tried to get back to the to the bow of the ship. And they had a little sign up that said uh, "closed for mooring operations" right. or something. So that you can't you can't really see them working, right? The, I, their fear is, I, I imagine, that like a rope or a chain will right. snap and yeah, and hurt somebody, yeah, or whatever. But it would be very bad, yeah. Uh, yeah, so the behind the scenes look in magic is something I doubt that any other ship's going to ever have. Right. I'd be very surprised. I don't, does Wonder have it? I think Wonder does have it. Okay. Yeah. I was, yeah. Yeah. Well, so we're going to have to cruise on it and find out. We'll, we'll, we'll find out someday. And then moving back, uh, going aft right toward the stern of the ship, same thing, the deck four really narrows uh, as, yeah. as you go through there. And, you know, there's just. There's not a lot of people walking on it. It's not like... No. I think at times there probably are. It just depends. Mm -hmm. We kind of were out at a time when most people wouldn't be walking anyway. But but I'm sure the early morning, there 
there probably is quite a few. Yeah. Yeah, there's, there's probably some people in charge. And there are treadmills on the ship, but we've never, ever no. bothered with them. Mm -hmm. No, I, I use a treadmill here at home, but I don't use one on the ship. Yeah. We always get our steps. Although, I, they do put them up against glass so you can see out, and I think it would be neat mm -hmm. to go check them out, but <laughs> we've never even done that. Yeah. Yeah, we'll have to look at it someday. Yeah. If, someday, if we don't get our steps, we'll have to... Uh, See if, see if the treadmills are an option. Right. Yeah, so so anyway, deck four, I think, is just it's one of my favorite places to be. Typically not jammed. Right. Um, decent on Magic, I think better on many of the other ships, but it's it's certainly usable. And it's, I think it's a great place to be when, like, you're pulling in to a dock. Right. Or leaving, and, and you kind of see, like, you see the pilot. So at this point... Uh, I don't, was this day two? We, we arrived at the new island. I think they just started going there this past summer. Mm -hmm. um, I believe it was the first, like, they called it a, like a preview cruise or something like that. So, so now it's fully operational for the cruise ships. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, what's interesting, of course, we never, uh, we never been to this destination before. Right. And when we were at dinner the night before uh, arriving here, they have a, a a man or a woman, this time it was a man, who always comes around and talks to you. Oh, right, the head waiter. The head waiter, right. I wasn't sure where you were going with that. I was like, what? Yeah, the, the head waiter. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so, <laughs> so he comes around and... Uh, I guess just like a small talk. Yeah. You know, like, just, yeah, the weather and right. how you're enjoying the cruise. And then usually they have a little story. Th this particular uh, guy this time had some some stories from, I think, Croatia. Yes. Or wherever, wherever he was from. And yeah. they were a little more, uh, let's just say, vibrant than, uh, you know, other yeah. stories. That yeah, I've heard. he was, yeah. Um, but kind of euphemism there. But the... Um, but he was talking about how there's this walkway to get from right. the ship uh, to to the island, right. and I guess it was built to preserve like a reef or something like that, right. a coral reef, which is fine. When he's talking to us, he's talking to the group. He, he just I felt like he was making excuses, like you know, like oh, it's not too bad. It's all, that, people say it's a long, impossible walk, but it's not really that bad. He was kind of getting me a little bit worried. It's a, it's an okay walk. I think it doesn't you know walking's good for you. It's 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 a substantial walk, but they do have golf carts for people who have with mobility, mobility issues. Yeah, yeah. Um, he did tell us our guy. Our guy told us that he timed that walk twice, mm -hmm. and it took him nine minutes. Yeah, it took us eleven. It took us eleven minutes. And and we're not we're not runners at all. But I can't run. No. We weren't. We weren't strolling. We were, so it was we like, were moving. Yeah, we, we were and it, a decent it took place. us eleven minutes to to finish that, and that was just to the sign, mm -hmm, right, where it begins. Right, and we didn't we didn't really go any further than that. We we walked to that point, took our pictures, walked through the gate, got some water, got some water. <laughs> And yeah. walked back. That was it. Yeah. So, but but our table mates were saying that to get to the beaches, it was like another half a mile beyond that point. On the now they did have like a little tram for that that mm -hmm. they would drive you, but that's we're not beach day people. No. So we don't typically go and hang out on the islands anyway. We like to enjoy the ship while it's empty, but. That's in 88, 88 yeah. 90 degree sunshiny mm -hmm. weather like that in the, in the, with humidity. Mm -hmm. That was tough. Yeah, that, that was. That was. Yeah. That especially because yeah. I guess we walked it and turned around and walked right, it back. Right. So 20, 25 minutes out there 
in the heat, because mm -hmm. we don't do heat, <laughs> was a lot. Mm -hmm. And and if we had little kids that we had to schlep out there and then spend the entire day on the beach playing in the sand, playing in the water, doing all that, and then have to have that whole walk back with tired little kids. We saw somebody carrying a baby that was yeah. asleep. Yeah. And not a, really even a baby, like a toddler sleeping. Like, that's a very cumbersome walk yeah. for that kind of activity. And then to know, because we didn't know this till after, but then to know that you still have another hike to even get to the beach part of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's... I don't know that we're going to book too many cruises to that island. Yeah. Because we're not beach people. Right. It, yeah. it just doesn't appeal in the same yeah. sense. We heard stories about numerous quantities, of, a large quantity of flies, too. Yeah, they, flies. they really struggled with the flies, especially in the beginning. But it, yeah. sounds like, it sounds like they're starting to get that under control, but still yeah. Yeah. a ways to go. So one of the nice things about uh, these days is when, when the ship is at like, this type of destination, is it's pretty empty. Yeah. And you know, we were walking through the various decks and seeing very few people. It was nice. Uh, that's the atrium. All decorated for Halloween. Yeah, the Halloween. And uh, that same tree, uh, the Halloween, the pumpkin tree, we have seen on other ships. Uh, it normally lights up. It did not light up this yeah. time because I think it was broken. Right. And yeah. it didn't light up last year on a different ship. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Why do we always get the broken pumpkin trees? <laughs> so this night, it, did, did we? there was a show this day, too. We saw Tangled. I could tell you if I saw our pictures in the theater, because I always take them. I don't know. We saw, we saw, we did not go on the second night. Okay. We went dressed as pirates, so that was night three. Oh, okay, okay. So this is, uh, they call it Lumiere's. 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 I call it Lumiere's. <laughs> It's Lumiere's, even though that's not the name, that's it's just what I call Lumiere's it. Lumiere's from Beauty and the Beast. Yeah, or Lumiere's, if as I prefer. Anyway, here here we are at that uh, uh, restaurant. It was a nice restaurant, uh, Lumiere's. Yeah. yeah, it was. It, yeah. Was, uh, it was quite a bit quieter than Rapunzel's. Mm -hmm. Rapunzel's had a show that... It was really noisy. It was fun, but it was loud yeah, yeah. and... Um, and then at the end, they had everybody up and dancing, which, I mean, it, it was a lot of fun, but it just, it didn't lend itself to table conversation because it just was so loud. Yeah, it's too loud. But at Lumiere's, it was, it was a little more relaxed, a little quieter, and, and we were in there twice. Right. We had dinner there twice because it was a four-night, there's... Three main dining rooms, and when you're on the ship more than those three nights, you you have to repeat. You go to yeah. go yeah. You have to repeat. So we repeated Lumiere's. Mm -hmm. So that was we were in there twice. Uh, so the next day was uh, Nassau, the right. Bahamas, right? Uh, which is a very common destination for many cruise lines. Right here we see we are next to uh, a carnival ship. Yep. Uh, and I believe there was, I think it was like a Royal Caribbean ship on the other side. Of there us. was. There uh, was. The last two times or three times that we've been to Nassau, we didn't even get off the ship. We, we may have gotten off the ship long enough to take a picture and gotten back on mm -hmm. because we just never, we're not big excursion people. Yeah. And we never really knew what to do. But then last year we went to Bermuda and our friends wanted to get off the ship right. and do something. So we got off the ship because they were with us and we ended up taking a tour with our our tour guide and we loved it. Yeah, it was great. It was great. Yeah. And so we decided that this time we're going to do the same thing in Nassau. Mm -hmm. We're going to try to find a tour driver similar to that. And, and that's what we did. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, so so we entered uh, we entered the Bahamas. There's like a place where you can go that says like taxis right. and tours. And I just walked up and I'm like, we want to tour the like a couple hours, and uh, that's what we did. Uh, and, you know, our our, uh, our tour guide was driving. I think it's called a Toyota High Ace. Okay. I looked it up after we <laughs> we came back, uh, and it's something. Uh, it's a vehicle that you can't get in the United States, but it was like a Odd, it was an odd like, I guess like a minivan. I was gonna say it was very a, much like with a, a full minivan. size. It was it was small. Yeah, but it had a lot of seats. And one thing I found really interesting, I think I have a, a shot in here somewhere of it, is the the vehicle had a uh, a manual transmission that was shifted on the dashboard. Yeah. So you know I've had many manual transmission vehicles. In my life, including tractors, right. heavy trucks, right. uh, like eighteen speed and everything, but in terms of like regular vehicles, I've had six speeds, right. five speeds, four speeds, three speeds. I had an old truck that was three speed on the column. Yeah, I remember that. Which was terrific. I love that old truck, old Dodge D one fifty. And you know, I had never, I've never driven a vehicle that had the stick coming out of the dash. <laughs> I, I was like, you know, and I still haven't. Right. But uh, you should ask him. If you think you yeah, I don't know if that would have went over. <laughs> I don't well. think he would have let you. Well, of course, these vehicles they drive on the left side of the road, so it's a right-hand drive mm -hmm. in the Bahamas, and so he's he's shifting on the dashboard with his left hand. Now I don't know if he was right-handed or left-handed. Right. But for me, you know, right-handed, that would be pretty difficult. Like yeah. It was some, something to to get used to. Now the pedals are the same. The pedals that. Are in the same position, right. whether they're right-hand drive or left-hand drive. But, but yeah, I just thought that was, you know, especially for a vehicle that was designed to stop and start constantly. And the only thing I can think of that, that makes sense is that he was talking about how it's very hard to get supplies to the Bahamas. Very yeah. expensive. Everything has to be ordered from the United States or other countries. Right. And it's imported. Right. So... Um, I imagine that they import a lot of Toyota parts, but automatic transmissions tend to fail right. at a higher rate than manual. So that's the only thing I can think of. Or maybe just cost. Just It keeps yeah. the cost down. But that's a lot of shift. And I like manual transmissions, but I would not want to drive one under these conditions. Right. You have the, um, uh, well, the, the quad bikes, the motorcycles, pedestrians jumped right out in front. Like we were, we were driving... <laughs> People jumped right out in front of this Toyota yeah. Hiace. Ace, and he just stopped like, like without even. It, we would have been like, "Hey, right. you know, you almost got yourself killed." Right. But it was just it was just business as usual for these guys. Well, he did say that their top speed limit is thirty-five or something. Something like that, yeah, forty yeah. something. It's, it's, I thought it's he low. said thirty-five because because it's so crowded, and I don't know how you can even get up to thirty-five because I don't think we did. Yeah. He said, I think he said there's two speeds, slow and stop. Yeah. <laughs> That's what they had. Yeah. But anyway, he took us on uh, on a tour in, in this, in this I think, it's, again, a high ace uh, vehicle. And we were kind of in the middle. And he was up front driving. And we took a lot of uh, photographs. Yep. And just really, I mean, beautiful country. Yeah. You know, certainly um, a little more chaotic than we're used to here yeah. in Delaware. But yeah. Uh, it, you know, it's vacation. You want to see different things. There's there's a lot of people running in a lot of different directions. Certainly, tight quarters with driving made me nervous a few times. Yeah, it was really tight. We saw this fort that's right behind that, and uh, I think we paid like I think it was nine dollars for to get in and get water. Right, I think so. It's like six to get in and three for the water. Yeah, and uh, I think. If I'm not mistaken, the, the guide said this fort never was actually used for combat. Oh, did he? It never I had missed to use that. It, yeah. But it was prepared for Ugh. pretty light duty combat, uh, I would say, based on how it's configured. But this was many years ago when it would have been operational. And from, the, from going up the stairs, uh, from the top of the fort, you can see all around. You can see yeah, you can 360 see the whole view. Island. And here we are going or up. Whatever it is. Up the stairs, you could see magic in the distance. Uh, and I think another cruise ship. Incredible view here of the Bahamas. So, this, yeah, this was the first place we stopped. 
And then we went down to, there's like a market that's alongside the fort. Right. And I, that's where I bought my hat. I bought a hat for $15. Yeah, and I bought an ornament. Yeah, and they accept uh, American money. Right. United States dollars, so very convenient. Then we went to, so at this point, the guide had us walk to the, what's it called, the Queen's Staircase? Mm -hmm. um, and he told us some, some facts about it. I think like how many steps and when it was built and things like that. Really beautiful. 66. The 66 steps, okay. Really beautiful sight. Um, you go down the steps and then we met him. Uh, hopped in the vehicle and continued on. We traveled to another part of the of the uh, area. Now, this was a little more confusing. I don't know if we really needed this part. Yeah. Um, there's a large casino yes. called Atlantis. Mm -hmm. There's a picture of it that uh, you know, we don't gamble. Right. We don't drink. Right. Like, it just... A lot of people on the cruises will get a day pass for Atlantis because they have a water... I don't know if it's an indoor water park. I don't know what it is. I just know that people go and do it. Um, I don't. I don't think it's a beach thing. I think it's an indoor water thing. And again, we're not. Yeah. We're not really water people, so that wasn't something that we were interested in. I've always had an interest in statistics and probability and mathematics and science. And uh, but I have a particular interest in statistics and probability that. Uh, you know, I, I used to do consulting and everything. And I guess for someone with that background, who's worked with numbers so much, right. casinos are are just plain offensive to me. Yeah. You know, we walked in there because we wanted to see it. Like, right. see it there. And you have all the slot machines, like roulette wheels, whatever they, whatever they have. I don't know if they have. Something like that. And it's really like, I know some people gamble casually. Right. Like, it's just for fun. Okay. Right. But there, there were also, like, people... Losing everything, I'm sure, right. right? Or at least maybe not when we're in there, but at certain times. So it's like a it's like a temple to people who are bad at math, <laughs> right? And I just it offends me. To, I get, I can't I can't stay in that environment. Yeah. It's just very tough. Like the house will always win. Right. Will always win. Uh, it's it's how the math works. Just, so, but okay, you know, we wanted to see it. It was a yeah. It was something that. Uh, I guess employs a lot of people, and so that's good. And then we walked back. It was like a marina here. As we walked back, we popped back in and drove kind of back to where we came from, right. over this bridge. And he talked about the like the fishing industry and mm -hmm. and the charter boats. So we stopped here, and there's another little. Uh, there's like a kind of like a beach sort of, mm -hmm. and another fort. Yes. So this one you can't go in, if I remember right, but great view of uh, this area of the Bahamas. Nice clear water. Mm -hmm. Really, uh, again, beautiful. It was it was beautiful. Mm -hmm. It was warm out, but it was it was okay. And you know, I think this is another point where I was kind of glad we went on the tour. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, there's a picture of the the fort as we took as we were getting ready to leave. So then it was back to. Magic, mm -hmm. and um, an ice cream, and yeah, an ice cream. I think we got some some other shots of the boats around and Magic here. Just even though it's a smaller vessel, it's it's always impressive when you're standing right outside. It is. Yeah. So Carnival, they backed up out of the uh, out of the port first. Right. We and backed into the port, so we were able to just pull out. Mm -hmm. Carnival pulled in. So with, with that ship pulling out, a good view there of, of Nassau. And it was our turn to depart. After this night, it was, the next day was the day at sea. Right. So we pulled out, and this dinner, wh where did we go for dinner on this night? So because we were in Nassau, this becomes pirate night. Oh, pirate night. It's a controversial night <laughs> on the ship, in my opinion. Everybody dresses up for pirate night, even if the only thing you wear pirate related is your bandana, which Disney provides. But most people will 
go full out. Mm -hmm. Pirate dress. We aren't those people. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we we did have a we have costumes. we did we yeah. did we've we've done everything from simple T-shirts that had the pirate clothes ironed on to you know the the linen shirt and the the wench puffy shirt and all that <laughs> kind of stuff. Um, Kind of went a little bit in between this time. I, I didn't do the skirt and the boots and the whole thing, um, mainly because it was hot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I just didn't want to do all that. So we did a little bit of pirate, a little bit of pirate. Um, but they have a pirate night menu, which is different from every other night. And many people are not a big fan of Pirate Night menu. Yes, I'm one of those people. I'm, not... I'm one right beside you. Um, but we do not eat seafood. It, we just aren't. It's not our thing. And there's there are just very few options for dinner on Pirate Night. And so it's not our favorite. Mm. It's not our favorite. No, and, and because everybody's getting the same meal, you right. can't order from another restaurant. So right. normally, like if you go to one restaurant um, and you really like like a certain steak, like I like the uh, uh, I can't remember which steak I liked this time. There was one steak I really liked. Yeah. But we didn't get it until the end. Right. Um, you can order it from whatever restaurant you're in. They'll go right. get it. Right. But you can't do that on Pirate Night. No, because everybody has the same menu. Yeah. So. We get what we can eat, and make the best of it, mm -hmm. and then if we're still hungry, we go up and get pizza from the from the pizza place on the pool deck. Mm -hmm. So pizza's great. Yeah, it yeah, is. It really is. It is. Um, so here we are. Uh, I just took this quick this quick photo of the the pumpkin tree. The pumpkin tree wasn't lit. It, was, it wasn't lit. It, 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 for whatever reason, that bothered me. And this was, it, I see it was unplugged, but it might have failed. And then they unplugged it. Right. I don't know if it right. was. Right. Yeah, I don't know if it was acting up or what. Because we didn't go to the tree lighting ceremony. Because on the first night, they do a whole big thing where they light the tree. And we just didn't go to that because it was it was a full ship. And the atrium is pretty small. And I'm like, I don't know where they're going to put all of those people that want to see it. So we're just going to skip that. So, mm -hmm. so I don't know if they ever got it lit and then it went out. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure because I, we didn't see the ceremony, so I don't know what happened. Yeah. Yeah. So, what that, is that? so I want a full refund for the cruise because yeah. the, the tree wasn't lit. Uh, yeah. Um, so. Oh, I know what this is. Yeah. We, this was a, uh, drawing exercise at, uh, there's a group to draw yes. a character group. Disney does a lot of animation classes. Um, during their cruises where you can grow, go and, oh, the glasses, where you can go and learn how to draw a character. And it tells you in the Navigator app which character they're going to be drawing. And I, we always try to do at least one of those per cruise. Mm -hmm. um, there were a few classes for characters that we've already done on previous cruises, right. but we've never done Groot. So I was excited to do to yeah. do Groot. And I'm terrible, terrible drawer. What? What? <laughs> but I did okay with Groot. Yeah, there was one. <laughs> no, don't tell that There's... story. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was Minnie Mouse. It was Minnie Mouse. Yeah. And I didn't have my glasses. And I couldn't see the screen because we sat on these little tiny chairs. So you feel like you're sitting in preschool chairs. And you've got this little tiny table. And we've both got these sheets of paper. And I couldn't see. I couldn't see the screen. I couldn't see the video. I couldn't see. So I'm listening and drawing. And it was just not. It just yeah. was not a good thing. It looked like, looked like Minnie became interested in methamphetamine. No. But it was way, really bad. Um, now they're all going to ask to see that. No, we cannot <laughs> talk about that story. Okay. Moving right along. 
So one place that you know you end up spending a lot of time on the ship, of course, is well, for us anyway, is going back and forth to the stateroom. Yeah. So I grabbed some footage of uh, just just deck eight, just you know, stateroom deck. Uh, the it's carpeted, pretty comfortable to walk. Uh huh. And there's certain times of day you can walk pretty much unimpeded, but sometimes they're cleaning. Right. You know, it's, it's harder. Uh, they have like the carts out, but uh, you know, clean, quiet. Yeah. You know, it's pretty easy to to maneuver. Although I feel like the first day we're always going the wrong direction. Yeah, until we get our bearings. So as I mentioned, we we spend a lot of time on the veranda. Some incredible views mm -hmm. from there. Re really stunning. No matter how many cruises we take. The views are just, they never get old. Yeah. Uh, of the ocean, of uh, islands that we're passing by. Mm -hmm. And we see other ships. Yeah. We, we saw uh, quite a few this time. I captured uh, images of a few of them. They ran near magic for quite a while. Right. There's like certain lanes that the ships are supposed to use. Mm -hmm. and they, they're not far apart. Uh, here we are at night. It's really beautiful at night mm -hmm. on deck four. We have some pictures. I think for me, like we talked about, this is like downtime. Yeah. And yeah. just, uh, just never. Not working, just relaxing and strolling out on the deck and just not working. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's a, that's a real change. Uh, and one thing we'd like to do is kind of go out later. Right. <laughs> when all the kids and. Yeah, and, and just whatnot. walk around the ship. There's people, like, there's. Cast members always right. are available. They're, you know, there's not many, but they're they're always like I guess services and they're cleaning and stuff. Right. But there's not many passengers out there. Uh, and then they all, these uh, I took this image of the on each deck. There's like the map. Right. And and you need it for the first couple of days. Yeah. Uh, with, you know, especially if you're new to it. Um, the most important things when you walk off an elevator or come downstairs, you have to know which way's forward and which way. Right. <laughs> yeah. And then. Um, we came back to Fort Lauderdale. It's always a sad time. It is. And, and uh, early in the morning, it was dark uh, still. And very hot. Just fogging up the lens. Mm -hmm. But yeah, um, we went and grabbed breakfast. And mm -hmm. then uh, we... we uh, left not too long after that. I would say like an hour and 15, 20 minutes after we ate or something. Uh, packed up, you know, had everything packed up. On the way out, I grabbed this this picture as we were waiting to like scan out or whatever. Right. And you see there's a, a couple uh, electricians working on the tree, right? So... <clears throat> yeah, because our magic was already ruined, so they have to fix it before the next one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Again, I... I Demand a full refund. Yeah, <laughs> um, because the tree wasn't lit. But yeah, so that was that was it. We we uh, went to the airport, flew back. It was uh, largely uneventful. Uh, came home and then and then immediately started working on the studio. <laughs> yeah, but we have another cruise scheduled in a, less than two months. Yeah, from now, uh, from the time we're making this video, and. Maybe we'll do another video if people want us to do another video about that one. It's a different ship. Sure, going on Dream. Yeah, bigger ship. Right after she's in dry dock. She's in dry dock now. Mm -hmm. So um, we'll be going on her right after dry dock. So she should have some updates and upgrades. And I'm curious to see, because we've been on her twice. So I'm curious to see what changes they make. Mm -hmm. So I was thinking if you wanted to be active in the comments for this video... Uh, people could leave like questions, whatever. For me, mm -hmm. you want to be active in the oh comments. Oh boy! Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you do know a lot about Disney. Yeah, yeah I uh, do. And and probably more than I'll ever know. Uh, and we have been on a few cruises, and and I, I try to offer, and I know you try to offer a, a a meaningful analysis of the experience, both good and bad. I know we talked like about the. Uh, you know, the tree not lighting right. <laughs> and the long walk on the island stuff. But overall, I think it is important to kind of punctuate uh, this video with, you know, uh, I'm a big fan of, the, of Disney Cruise Line. Right. I, and you know. and they're, we're really just being silly. Those things yeah, yeah. don't matter in the overall scheme yeah. of things. It's more about the relaxation and just 
getting away from this for a few days to give you some downtime. Yeah. Um, they're not deal breakers. No. They're, it's just no. things that we can complain about because we can. <laughs> well, you know, I think it's important to to offer an honest review of, right. you know, always be honest and, and, and analysis. I think it's critical. And sure, you know, on any cruise line, I'm sure we could find things to, that well, we did So like. many people, like the walk, the walk to the, mm -hmm. the new island, so many people were posting pictures of it and talking about it when it, when they very first started going. And I looked at those and I was like, oh boy. But now that I've done it, I know it's an 11-minute walk. No. I don't have to guess anymore. <laughs> I don't have to look at that and be overwhelmed. I know it's going to take me 11 minutes once I get off the ship to get to cold water. Yeah. And actually, that's not even true because they had water in the middle. Yeah. It just water. wasn't marked well. I didn't realize it was water until I realized it was water. Um, but it's not as daunting now because mm -hmm. I know it's 11 minutes. Yeah. Um, the tree, it is what it is. Yeah. Not everything's 100% all the time, but Disney does work very hard to make it, to make everything go smoothly and, and make it a nice experience. And I think yeah. Magic showed its age a little bit, but it was very clean. Right. The service was, it's always excellent. Always. Always. I've never had a complaint about any of the service ever, the, the cleaning of the rooms, the the waiters, right? Uh, never, <clears throat> not even one. Like so, I mean, and again, yeah. If I did, I would say so. <laughs> like, right, and yeah. and that's the thing. They they're always because we use our veranda so much. Yeah, we're always in their way. <laughs> we're yeah, yeah, we are in their way because normally people go out and go to breakfast, and they're out of the rooms for an hour or two sometimes. And we go get breakfast and take it back to our room. Right. And, we, and we catch the guy. Right. Because yeah. they wait for you to leave so they can clean. And and he he kept saying, is it okay if I clean? I said, just, we're going outside. You do what you have yeah. to do. I don't want to, I don't want to hold them up or be in their way because that throws off their schedule. Um, and I know that they're just trying to do their job and they're, yeah. they're so, they're so friendly they and are. so Positive. polite and yeah. just, We'll bend over backwards to do anything for you. And he kept asking, is everything okay? Is everything okay? And everything was fine. I just, we just like to eat on our veranda. So yeah. I, I feel like we were in his way a lot. A but lot. And we have been in the way of many of them. Yeah. And, you know, I think, you know, I could never handle, I could never do the job that they do. Right. But if I somehow magically could, I would be, if I could physically do it, uh, I would be irritated by people coming back. <laughs> I'd be like, seriously? Like, <laughs> I just saw you leave. <laughs> but they are all, they never act the way I would act. No, right? no. Uh, yeah, never. They they always, like, like they're apologizing. Right. You know, and, right. and so I, we just go out to the veranda, try to gather way. Um, but, yeah, they're, the service is always excellent. And I deliberately didn't take images, photographs of them. Right, you know, right. But, but uh, they're always smiling. Yeah, always friendly. I, I've never had even one complaint. Yeah, and I, they know. work so hard. They yeah. they work so many days a week, and the reviews just, we give them are always top marks for everything. Yeah, every time. So, yeah, I've never had in six cruises. We've never had anybody that that wasn't extremely friendly mm -hmm. and willing to do anything that I ask. In the you know in the room to to make it a more comfortable cruise, um, I had the soap bothers me sometimes, um, and I get I end up getting dry skin. So I asked on our last cruise I asked for different soap, and he brought me like two or three bars of different soap to use and and try, and like just anything that you ask for, they they just are more than willing to. Yeah. To work on things. So overall, you know, overall, of course, I would recommend, I'd recommend Magic. I I didn't like it as much as the larger ships, but it was still a fantastic cruise. Right. And if they had an itinerary that I really um, wanted to go on, and it was Magic, I would take it. Right. So it's right. not like, you know, oh, that's that's it for Magic. Yeah. But you do have to just expect it's not, uh, it's not a massive ship. Right. 
Yeah, so. yeah and, a, and a lot of people do still like it. Um, I, I think everybody has kind of a favorite ship if they've been on more than one of the ships. And it's just not our favorite. But for a lot of people, it is. Mm -hmm. And I, I think we just, we just prefer the little bit bigger ships. Some people actually prefer the smaller ships. It just, small right compared to what yeah we've been so used to yeah but again if we started there right if we had know, started there who knows where we would where yeah. we'd be placing that favorite right yeah so that's you know those are our thoughts on on uh on uh disney's magic mm -hmm. uh it's an interesting experience I, I feel fortunate that we're in a position to take these cruises and uh, I hope that someday, far in the future, when I retire, we can continue uh, taking them. But uh, any, you know, any comments? Please put them in the comment section, and Amy will take a look at that and <laughs> maybe respond, maybe try to respond. Uh, you know, any 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 thoughts? As always, I appreciate you watching, and uh, if you like this cruise review, uh, we'll do it again for the next cruise. Um, I'm going to continue working on my usual videos with the new set, uh, with, with the brick wall. This one has the cracks filled in. Yeah. Because I didn't install it. Right. <laughs> so, the contractor who knew what he was doing right. uh, matched the color and, and filled it in. So I'm really happy with it. Uh, I feel like it's a great productive environment. Um, but of course, still want to cruise. <laughs> yeah. Got to have uh, some downtime. Mm -hmm. So again, thank you, and I'll talk to you soon.